Hi everyone, welcome to the Bison Media Blog Studios along with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo, ready for NDSU and Youngstown State. We made it out of Terre Haute. Hope everybody enjoyed our day in the life of Dom Izzo, thanks to Mr. Kolpak. But it was a arduous journey to get out of the stadium on Saturday night. Martin Scorsese, I'm not as a movie director. It wasn't bad. It was a, it it was a good well. effort. Thank you very much. But yeah, a little problem getting locked in at Indiana State's uh, stadium. And you know, Steve Walker, if the legend wasn't enough right. in a lot of people's minds right now, in our mind, he found a way out of there. Let's just say he did something to the latches. More miraculous than the comeback against Sam Houston State. Absolutely. 12-foot high fences. Was getting us out of Terre Haute on Saturday. But the Bison got out of Terre Haute, Jeff, with a win. Now 9-0, and coming back for the regular season home finale with Youngstown State, a team in the past three years they have played some epic games against. Last year, they had the miraculous comeback at the end where Jose Moeller hit Justin Howard on the game-winning touchdown. Two years ago, Youngstown won. 39-35. What's about these two teams that make for ridiculous games? This series goes five games, and there's a couple games in the 70s, included Ron Jaworski himself, which <laughs> yes. I think was a 12-10 to 10 game. I just think it's a, it's a matchup of teams who have uh, similar styles, and, and uh, you know, sometimes teams just have a wacky games against one another, and this is one of them. The Bison, for the past couple years, prior to last year, Jeff, had major issues at quarterback in terms of depth. Now they're running into it at wide receiver. On Saturday, we saw Trevor Gebhardt did not play. We found out today he's got a fractured tibia, a stress fracture. He's out for an indeterminate amount of time. Now, and obviously, Zach Vry has been out since the first game of the season. Uh, Walk-on, true freshman from Dickinson, North Dakota, Nate Moody came in. He had two catches in the game against Indiana State before he got hurt. It looks like he'll be able to play against Youngstown. But besides Ryan Smith and Warren Holloway, the Bison are in deep straits here at wide receiver. Warren Holloway, 49 catches. Ryan Smith, 34 catches by two of far and away the team yeah. leaders. After that, you have Nate Moody with three, two coming on Saturday. You have <laughs> Cooper Walla with one, Brady Hansen with one, Zach Vra with two before he got hurt. Is it time for Marcus Williams? Well, Craig Bull hinted at that. I'll ask you your thoughts on that. He is obviously the most dynamic player on the field. Had another huge kick return on Saturday that changed the momentum of the game. This seems like a logical option to me. Well, he's uh, obviously a premier athlete in, in the division. He was a receiver in high school yep. before he came to college where they decided defensive back would be his best position. Correctly so, of course. <laughs> But, you know, why not? Put your best athletes out there and let them play. Does this take away from his ability to focus on defense? I ask you that because that's maybe the first red flag that fans, and even I would have, to say he is so great at corner. And now, granted, he's already returning kicks. Mm -hmm. Now you got to do another thing. Does that? Do you worry about that at all? No, because guys like that are just a cut above everybody else. That's true. And you're not going to do this every day. You might do it with one or two great athletes. He's an athlete, Dom. He's just an athlete. He's the one guy on this team, say, Give him the ball. Youngstown State comes in with a third highest scoring offense in the nation, but I'm going to put an asterisk next to that because three of their games, Jeff, they scored 77 on Valparaiso, which is a non-scholarship team, 49 on St. Francis, the Bison got 56 on them, and 56 on Western Illinois, who's the worst team in the league. Those three teams combined have a 4-24 and 24 record. I'm not saying Youngstown's not a good team, but the teams they've scored all their points against are not very good. Well, they scored a lot of points on the Bison in the past, too, true. but this is a different defense in NDSU, and I think the biggest stat is the red zone statistics. Opponents have gotten inside the 20 yard line 25 times. They've scored on 17 of those and, and average of those 17 uh, scoring chances is 3.7 points. So That's crazy. what I mean is they've only given up a field goal in red zone opportunities. You can look back to Southern Illinois. You can look back to South Dakota State. You can even go back to Indiana State. All three of those games on the road mm -hmm. that teams got deep inside Bison territory inside the 10 and only got three points, sometimes no points. And there's a couple instances where they got inside the one <laughs> and, and came none. away with a field goal, and one instance came away with nothing. So, yeah, that's uh, and that really uh, stems momentum, I think, more than anything for, for an opposing offense. What did you see out of Brock Jensen? First game really dealing with a turf toe, had a great play on third down that the Bison got a field goal and basically put the game out of reach on Saturday. He's going to have to deal with this. Uh, for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Like. You know, you can't get toe replacement surgery as far <laughs> as I know. So yeah, it's just one of those things where, and he's, you got to be a tough guy, and he's obviously a tough guy for what he uh, did on, on Saturday. So I, I think it's just going to be the story of the rest of the year. Before we leave football, sellout crowd you expect on Saturday for the home finale? I, I think so. I think uh, this team has, has got uh, back to that 07 buzz. No doubt it'll be sold out. Actually, one last question. Justin Jockham will start at nose mm -hmm. tackle. Ryan Drevlow, uh, the North Sergeant product, the winner North Dakota native, is out with an MCL strain. Looks like maybe three to four weeks. So 
we're thinking maybe second round of the FCS playoffs. How much does that change on the upfront for the for the Bison? Not much. I think Juckum's really been on par with Drevlo, and, and he's I think he's acted like a starter this year. He's, he's big good. enough. He's fast enough, and and he was highly recruited enough he too, was. and he's starting to live up to that. What's your feeling on Zach Rod? We see him at all before the end of the regular Absolutely. season? Absolutely. I think if you play him, uh, if you can play him at all, uh, let it go. Let it let it fly. The biggest talker besides the Bison football team, Jeff, this past week was the Bison men's basketball team and what happened last Tuesday night at the BSA where MSU Morehead came in in two overtimes and beat North Dakota State. Division two knocking off Division one wasn't really uh, unknown last week because Northern State went and beat Butler uh, as well, but. Your thoughts of taking away uh, from the Bison basketball team what you saw last Tuesday? Well, the big king will be Eric Carlson, and yeah. I think the biggest question with him now that his jaw is wired shut is, can he keep up with his weight? Because he's right. going to have nothing but, what, smoothies? Is that what <laughs> we Basically. For the next four weeks. This team's going to have to find a leader from its younger players, and I think it's time for Taylor. I think it's Taylor Braun's team. I really do. He really looked like that the second half of last year, even with Mike Tweet and Freddie Coleman on the team. Braun was, a lot of the time, the go-to guy for a basket. They relied on Braun to get that to drive to the hoop and score. Obviously, now more of that burden will come on him with Carlson having a broken jaw. From what you saw out of Lawrence Alexander, the true freshman point guard, he will be the starting point guard for the Bison when they open the season at San Francisco on Friday. Obviously, talented enough with that dunk you had that yeah. you relate to George Hill, which very, is a very pretty good. Um, heady uh, uh, comparison. He's got the talent, and it's just a matter of time before he takes over the rest of the game. How important is this, this opening three games? They go to San Francisco, which was a... a postseason team, as was Northern Arizona and Louisiana Lafayette. This is comparable, you know, if they make a Summit League run to play three games in three days. Well, in one line, I think we'll see how this young team operates on the road. And uh, you have to operate on the road if you're going to contend for uh, upper division finish in the Summit League. True, uh, out of the other two true freshmen, Chris Kading and, and Joe Lindberg, did either one of them uh, see the floor? Good question. I think we'll find out this week. Obviously, uh, I think the decision will be made either today or tomorrow. Both are capable of if I would give the edge one to the other, I think Kading would have the edge as far as not redshirting. That's the latest on the Bison Media blog here, video style. NDSU set for Youngstown State. Jeff and I will be there at the Dome to preview that with full highlights and reaction coming on Saturday.